Hey everyone, so today I just wanted to work on overclocking this Genesis. This is my end, and the, really the only mods I've done to it is just the AV mod. It outputs composite as well as uh, S-Video. Um, and I also socketed the CPU so this you know CPU can actually be taken out and a different one put in if needed. So this one works just fine, but I want to overclock it. Now, if you don't know um, why you would want to overclock a Genesis, let me show you. Now, admittedly, the capture quality of this capture card sucks, but it's good enough just for testing and just for demonstration purposes. Uh, later on, I will uh, plug it directly into the camera, and the quality there is, you know, fantastic. But for now, this will just give you the point. And i got to fix this later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to accelerate. I'm not going to turn. And you're going to see how jumpy this is. Yeah, I know it looks like crap, but it doesn't actually look like that. It's just a capture card. But you see how jumpy it gets? Now you get used to it after some time, but the controls are also lagged because of it. So just like a computer, you can overclock it. Now, just like a computer, your results may, you know, may vary. So I've already taken this apart, and the metal shielding, as you'll see, is currently not in there, but I do have it, and I do use it. So for everybody that might be commenting and screaming at me for not having it, it's there, trust me. Just for this demonstration, or just for this, I already removed it. So let's disconnect all this. Now what we're going to do is you can see that the CPU is there and I have socketed it. Let's zoom in a little bit. So here is the main oscillator, the CPU, and the game cartridge slot. Now what a lot of people will do is they'll put a second oscillator in here for say 10 megahertz or 12, whatever they want to use. And uh, they have a switch in the back which will switch it back and forth. Well, you can do that. It requires you buying another oscillator and wiring it up. Another way that you can do it is there is a 13.4 megahertz signal uh, on the card slot. And you can actually use that to run this at 13 megahertz versus, I believe, the original is like 7. What is it? Uh, yeah, 7.6. So what people do is there's a pin in the back here that they will rip out of the board. They'll basically just unsolder it and pry it out. And I really didn't want to do that, so that's why I socketed this. So I can remove this. CPU and put it back into the socket with one pin kind of hanging out. Uh, that way, you know, it can be returned to stock very easily. So let's pull this out of here. Try not to break anything. And yeah, it looks like I was in here before and did this, I think, when I was doing my homework. And I'm not sure if this is, I think, from what I remember reading, B19 is the stock signal and B15 is 13 megahertz. So let's uh, let's take a look at that and see. So what we'll do is I'll put a game back in it. And I'm just going to plug in the video for now. I'm not going to worry about audio. And we'll give it some power. And let's ground out the lead. Okay, so this one here looks like it's 15. And as you can see in the left-hand corner there, the game is running. And this is saying we have 13.42 megahertz. So 13.4 megahertz, that's what we need. So on 15, we have 13.4. So it's 15, 16, 17, 18, and then 19 right here. And this is on the card slot. And we have 7.6, and the trigger is not the best. I haven't quite figured out this scope too well. And I think it's not so much me as this uh, USB scope sucks, but it is what it is. So 19 is 7.6. So there's our two signals. We have 7.6 and we have 13.4. And we're going to try to run this. We're going to interrupt the clock, go into the CPU, which is the 7.6. And we're going to replace it with the 13.4. And we're going to see how well this works. So let me unplug it. Let's get this out of the way. 
Let's get this game out of the way. All right, so what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna remove the CPU or at least one side of it so that we can pull the pin out. And the pin that we wanna pull is uh, 15 off the CPU. And we're just gonna let that kind of dangle because we're gonna connect two different uh, clock signals to it. So what I'm just gonna do is just lift it gently. And it's obviously not plugged in right now to anything. And they don't come socketed. You have to do that yourself. And you don't necessarily have to, but uh, I did it just to make my life a little bit easier. All right, so the pin we're looking for, I believe is where I marked it here, was um, 15. So we got one, and this little dot right here is what signifies number one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So it's this pin right here. All right, so now that that's bent out, we put CPU back down. So just for giggles and testing, I just want to see if this will work. I'm going to run a wire between this pin here and the clock input of the CPU. Now, I don't think this is going to work because from what I've read, um, you can't boot these overclocked. They won't work. But I don't see it harming anything, so... Oops, let's get that out of there. 15. But let's just see what happens. And let's see if this actually works. I don't think it will, but we'll find out. Wow. Yeah, it just says produced by. It won't go past that screen, the trademark screen. Okay, no problem. We can fix that. So I'm gonna put a switch in here in the center post I'm gonna to put towards the CPU. That way we can rock it back and forth. And this is a only temporary. I have a much better looking switch set up if this actually works. Okay, so this should work as normal because it's back to 10. Oh, I guess I have to uh, plug in video. I guess that'll I guess that'll help, huh? Okay, so it should boot into the game now. There. Now, if we just switch this over, it's going to crash. So what we need is to ground out the halt pin. So the halt pin is pin 17. So this is 15. Let's zoom in a little bit. 15, 16, 17. Let's ground it there. Let's do this a little bit differently. I'm going to solder this straight to the CPU.
The halt wire is directly to the CPU, and we can switch this back and forth. So let's turn it on, running at uh, its stock clock speed. Now, you know, let me plug a controller in, just in case it does work. And I'll reset it. Let's get into a game. All right, so right now it's running under seven. So we're gonna halt it, switch to the other speed, and let go. It's a lot smoother, but it does not like that. So 13 megahertz is a bust. However, I got, this is not the Motorola. This is the one that doesn't, this brand does not like to, what is it, Siemens, I think? Not allowed to be, or doesn't like to be overclocked. What I do have, though, is a Motorola CPU. So let's pull this one out and actually see if just swap, swapping CPUs actually makes a difference. Okay, now I don't even know if this, C if this CPU is any good. Um, I just kind of found it in a parts heap. So we're going to find out right now. Ooh. Cool. So this one does work. Let's wire this to here, or solder this to here. Let's get into a game. Here we go. Let's hold it. Switch it over, let go. Starting to get a lot of artifacts. But you saw it was a lot smoother. And then it locks up. So it doesn't lay 13. Let's see if we can turn this one on without switching it. No, can't do that. Let's try a different game. Let's try Sonic 2. Let's just see what happens. Start it off at 7. So if we hold it, I'm just curious, if we hold it, and then what happens if we let go?
uh, catches up. Cool. All right, so let's halt this. Switch it and let go. <laughs> it's not working very well. It's not liking this at all. There's no sound. <laughs> it doesn't like this at all. Let's see if we can do this and we'll see if we can get it back. Let's switch it back. And it's back at 7, but it's not liking it. Let's reboot. Let's try, a Let's try Sonic 1. Let's see what happens. Liking it. Okay. Well, all right. So 13 megahertz on this system is a bust. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, find myself, uh, ten, you know, another oscillator, maybe a 10 megahertz, and we'll run it off of that and see what happens then. Now, what I will do is I'll show you my plan. Now, I have these panel switches. I have this one. Let me set this down here. I got this one here, and then I got this black one, and these are for just power. And what I wanted to do was, in the back here, I printed out a little a plug to block off the EXT port because it's not used on this board. And I was going to put these switches in place. That way it actually looks real nice and you don't have toggle switches hanging out. There's a problem though. This is a dual pole single throw. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, dual pole single throw. This is a dual pole or single pole double throw. In other words, we can alternate between two inputs. This one is either on or off. So, I don't know what I'm going to do there. Maybe run a relay, but I don't know if the interference of the relay is going to cause a problem. The other thing is I have is this button here, and it's a momentary on. And I was going to put that right back here, and I know it's kind of dark. So I figure between that and this, you get the momentary. And then you got the, and that can be, you know, regular, and that can be turbo, or whatever, for the frequency speeds. So it'll look real nice, plus with the 3D printed uh, thing in the back, so it, you know, it actually winds up looking pretty nice, I think. So, I gotta get myself another oscillator, which I don't have, but uh, we'll revisit this here in the near future, and see if we can actually overclock this thing. All right, well, I hope you guys have a good one, and uh, I know this is a little bit anticlimactic, but this is just the start. We're going to get this thing overclocked. I just had to order in a, uh, an oscillator, and I was kind of hoping that the build-in one would work, but uh, it's not a problem. Uh, so I'll order that, and we'll, we'll get to part two.